it's Anne. Today we are going to look in on my 55 gallon bin blue. I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you what it takes for me to get ready to take care of him for one of these videos. Not only are you going to see blue, but you are also going to see what's all around blue and, and what it takes and where do I throw those things when I throw them off camera. All right, well, let's get started. Okay, so here we are at Blue. Now, first things first, we are going to do a little bit of a harvest over here. So I've got this new pan that I found at one of the nurseries, and I think that works a lot better for doing my sifting. It seems to be a little bit more sturdy, and then I'm just gonna toss these at the far end here. Just trying to get blue reduced a little bit so that it is not so full. Uh, I kept adding all those different bins to it and uh, unfortunately that kind of was getting me a little bit frightened that blue was going to fall over because it was so, so full. Not to mention it's kind of screwing up my wedge. You can see there's worms over here. They wouldn't be there if I had not gone against my own ideas but I needed to reduce the number of bins for my own sanity and so here we are dealing with the aftermath you can see the sort of thing that's left over you know you've got some eggshell that wasn't broke up probably got some avocado peel that I don't know what that is that's gonna go in the garbage but yeah just you know little seeds uh, things that just did not you know degrade the first time around that's okay, we'll just put it at the other end. That'll get around to it sooner or later. I do leave it uncovered on this end so that it can dry out. This also gives me a good time to look through and see if there's any random plastic that somehow may, made it in there. Get that out of there. Uh, not everybody has to do this. You know, I, I do this because I prefer my castings to be, you know, very fine. Um, just like a seed starting mix kind of and it is a component of my seed starting mix. It's about 20% 25% According to the books you should not do more than 30% uh, or otherwise it will actually stunt the growth of your seedlings In fact, I, I just read an article the other day about uh, they wanted to know what the nutrient abilities of worm castings were and one of the things that they found that they didn't mention why it didn't work but having read all of the books you know from worms eat my garbage to you know all of those normal books that people read uh, everybody knows that there are certain hormones in with the worm fastings and oddly enough oop, there's a cast there's a little cocoon that goes right through the quarter inch at my stage of the game I have enough worms I don't need to rescue every cocoon um, but if I see it, I do try and rescue it. But anyway, like I was saying, they, what they were trying to prove was that uh, waste that was coming from a farm, a cow farm, uh, and basically they had regular just ye old cow poop and fed it to the worms, and then they had some that had been digested by some method, I don't fermentation or something. Anyway, they discovered that the the cow poop that had been put through the digester, the seedlings didn't grow as uh, as well, but they said that the 100% cow poop worm castings actually grew worse. And I think that the more concentrated worm casting 
actually does stunt growth, which is something that if you ever get a chance to buy any uh, worm composting research books, there's uh, a man by the last name of Edwards, and all of his books, you know, he's spent his entire life, I mean, he's been, he was born in the UK, came here, worked at the University of, uh, I think, Iowa? Anyway, uh, but that was one of the things that he and his fellow researchers found was that worm castings improve seedling growth up into a certain, certain point, at which point they actually hinder it. So putting your, uh, your plants in 100% worm castings is not a good idea. Too much of a good thing, that kind of thing. Okay, so I think I've, I've got down to the part where it's too wet to sift, but doesn't that look nice? Um, and, and again, this is not no, not necessary whatsoever. Basically, I do this um, for consistency, just so I don't have uh, things sprouting up in my plants. All right, so let me go put this in the bin that I keep all of my finished castings. Okay, so it has been three weeks since we've looked in on blue, so we're going to do a little bit of a fluff here, basically just to keep all of the castings here drying out so that I can harvest it so that the worms can move down to the business end where I'm feeding. Also, you know, one of my primary objectives at this point is to get Blue to slim down a little bit. He's on a diet. So just want to make sure that I keep everything stirred up so that the moisture can uh, dry out so that the worms will move. A lot of times worms will hang out because there is like these right here. They'll hang out because there's, you know, there's still nutrients in here, apparently enough, but the, for the moisture, the moisture is critical. If it becomes um, an unhappy moisture, they will totally get out. So that's why I'm more fluffing right now than usual. I try to keep it down to about once a month to make sure that everything stays aerobic and that there's not any sour patches in the bottom. You don't want the worms to get any sort of ammonia or any sort of gases that happen from decomposting food because that will kill them. So the center line here is getting closer and closer to the part where I have recently fed. So I'm going to try and keep this kind of in line. It's still got some recognizable food in here, sticks and stems. This part probably has not been fed in four or five months, but yet it is uh, still reasonably populated with worms. And with the 20 pounds of red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers in here, and that's not 20 pounds of each, that's total. Um, so, yeah. It's probably mostly red wigglers and blue worms. Just looking at them, like this is an adult worm, but there's no clitellum showing, so it's probably a blue worm. Whereas this one with the little yellow tail is probably a red wiggler. They don't get very big in this system. So anybody who breeds them professionally, you know, they get really good sized worms because that's the whole point of what they're doing. But in my case, I'm just trying to get them to eat my Amazon boxes and my food scraps. All right, so the wedge method, if you're new here, the wedge method, basically you start at one end and you push all the food and bedding to this end but then the next time you come in, you don't really disturb that. You add food and bedding to this portion. And then again, the next time you add food and bedding to this portion. And eventually they, the worms will follow the food and they will vacate the area and start moving to the place with the higher concentration of food. And so then, you know, when you wanna harvest things over there, like you just saw, it's mostly free of worms and free of uh, food stuff. That way you don't have to worry about harvesting the worms with light migration or sifting or, or anything like that. 
<sighs> going on a year and a half for that pumpkin stem there. So just making sure since this has been fed, you know, reasonably recently, you can see where it's much, much wetter down there. Make sure that that moisture is good, but also that there's oxygen in there where the worms can get to it because worms don't breathe out of their mouth like humans do. They breathe through their skin. So the, you know, the castings and the bedding have to stay moist so that the oxygen is present for the worms to breathe. All right, let's move you down to the business end. Okay, looks like we're we're growing more pumpkins down here, and that's that's totally fine. Um, I actually was watching another channel that said that for gardens and growing in containers, you actually want to have sprouted grain or sprouted something put in with your mix because there's extra enzymes or, or hormones or something in with the sprouted items and they said it doesn't even really matter what it is that your sprouts are but that they will in fact add a lot of nutrients to the uh, flower bed or whatever that you're adding it to. So I, I do kind of let them sprout, but then I turn them over and hopefully I'm accomplishing the same thing. I'm not sure. If any of you guys actually know how that mechanism works, that sprouted things are good for growing, let me know. Put that in the comments below. I haven't really researched that. Oh no. Look at that. That's one of those huge, huge ones. I think this was a black avocado. Oh man. I did lose a couple of this year, so I'm kind of kind of wanting to, to grow an extra one. Because, you know, who doesn't need a farm of avocados in Illinois? All right, I'm starting to see quite a few worms. I'm just gonna move the top part out of the way. Uh, I have been putting leaves in here, so we are gonna get acorns, etc. Try and go right along the edge here so that I'm not hurting any worms. Okay. I'm starting to question this thread. It started out looking like this. This is, come on buddy, out of there. So these are the compostable bags that I make my worm tea with. And they were supposed to be 100% compostable. Maybe I just need to bury it deeper or something. You can tell they are getting through it but uh, the bags were gone within a couple of weeks, but the string seems to be made out of uh, tougher stuff. Okay. Ah, still, this is getting kind of compacted here. This is gonna take a little bit more effort, but you can see the concentration of worms is a lot more right here because they just got here probably two months ago. And I've put, I don't know how many pounds of worms in here extra. So they're, I'm trying to get everything to kind of condense a little bit to make the living, living area for the worms a little bit bigger than usual, just because I've added so many worms. But there's almost only so much time in the day to take care of the worms. Okay, so that's looking good. This is definitely in process. Let's see, what is... So this might have been part of that sheet that we were... It was like a queen size sheet that we put in about four or five months ago. Maybe that was a tag or something. A lot of times tags and thread of clothing, even though it says it's 100% cotton, a lot of times they are not the thread and the tags anyway. I guess that doesn't count or it's not big enough percentage for it to count. Well, don't know. Also, if you're in the clothing industry and you know the answer to that, put that below. If you are liking this video or the series with blue here, uh, if you wouldn't mind, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, consider subscribing. I look in, in, a, look in on blue, uh, I don't know, every three or four weeks. but they are still breeding. I'm still seeing cocoons in here, new cocoons. So somebody had asked me, you know, how do you know when you've got too many worms in the bin? 
I think that I read that worms are self-limiting, so if there are too many worms, they stop breeding, and then all you see is adult worms. So I'm still seeing babies. See the tiny little babies here? And I'm still seeing new cocoons. Let's see if I can grab this one here. Nope, lost it. If I find another one, I'll show you. Okay, so we're getting into a lot of stuff that's definitely not done here. But maybe we'll get a worm ball. We did feed quite a bit of pumpkin last time. So fingers crossed. It's just very, very heavy. I'm trying to get all the big clumps to the bottom or to the back here. Still not feeling anything squishy. Oh, that was a green pepper plant that didn't make it. I've got probably about 10 overwintering pepper plants, some hot peppers, some regular eating peppers. That way I don't have to buy more. Not that it stops me. I've probably purchased, I don't know, another four or five hybrids and species of peppers for this year. Do love my peppers. Uh, let me know what it is that you're excited to get growing this year. I have a lot of new uh, tomato plants. They're called the Dwarf Tomato Project plants. And they're supposed to give you the same taste as like a, um, like a brandy wine only the plants only get to be like four foot tall. Super excited, because then I can get twice as many plants. Okay, I, I do feel something squishy now, so let's, let's go at this a little bit more gingerly. Ooh, there's kind of a worm ball, kind of messed it up. So there, can you hear that? That's the worms. Just all squishing around. Here's an example of like a feeding frenzy for the worms. They're all inside of that pumpkin. So yeah, there is a little bit of food left here. I'm gonna kind of start stacking up the leftover food that I'm finding. Don't know if they'll need as big of a feeding as I brought down for them. Always afraid with this many worms in here that they're gonna go hungry because I don't know, I've never had a bin with this many worms in it before. I am kind of concerned, uh, you know, that the rate of food consumption will be higher than what I have accounted for. So I have been trying to feed a little bit heavier. So it looks like the, I don't know if it was two or three pumpkins that we put in last time. I'll have to go find a picture. But it looks like at the very least there's leftover food so they couldn't have gone hungry. Is that good logic for you? I think so. So it's good that I'm flipping this over. Much to my sadness, it's uh, no longer avocado season in Florida, so I can't have fresh avocados anymore. So I have, think I have to wait until like April? I'm not sure. I don't know, you Florida people, uh, when, when can I get my new uh, avocados from Florida? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's kind of bad when you, when you get the good Florida ones and then you're stuck eating grocery store Haas for the rest of the winter. Super sad. Yeah, I don't know, I think I'm gonna take that out. Make sure there's no worms stuck to it. Oh, you know what? That's, those were my son's shorts. There you go, chaps. <laughs> Only thing left is the, the rivet, and I don't know what that is. Part of a pocket, maybe? No, uh, it looks like he's threading himself through it, so I'm gonna leave it on top so he'll go back underneath. All right, I'm not finding any other food other than that little bit of pumpkin, so I think we were pretty close with how much food it takes to feed 20 pounds of worms for three or four weeks. So that's good. I'm, I'm glad that I've reached 
a volume that I know is, is good for them and I don't have to worry about starving my poor worms. All right. Oh, this is the rest of that sheet. Yeah, I think that's just, I think that's just elastic at this point. So we'll leave that on top and let the worms crawl out of it. Yeah, I do all sorts of experiments. If you go back and look at the uh, playlists, I have the Eat My Shorts, uh, which is not just shorts. They were eating t-shirts and all sorts of things. Cork. This is actually a shirt from my Eat My Shorts um, experiment. And although it said that it was, I don't know, 80, 20 cotton, it's literally, you can still, I mean, you can sort of see through it and stuff, and it actually feels kind of silky. But uh, yeah, they ate all the cotton off of it and, and left the poly. Thought that was pretty funny. So I washed it, and now it is the, uh, the dish rag for the basement for the worms. Okay, so we've created a new spot here, and I'll put all the old stuff in the bottom. It's the farthest gone, might as well. We'll pick everything through and grab that when we're filling back up. Okay, I just love my new little pan thing. All right. so there's some bedding for them. Now let's get them some food. Getting towards the end of my stash of pumpkin. It's frozen several times and thawed out, so I let it thaw before I brought it in today. But that should be good. Now let's get them some more bedding. All right, and then I'm just gonna backfill with the in progress stuff so that, um, Hopefully any critters cannot, you know, smell the new food. And all this down here should be broke, or all of this should be broken down enough that it shouldn't attract pests. In theory. All right, straighten that all out. And then I have been covering up the feeding portion with this little part here. Um, kind of over the top here so that any gases that might be created can, you know, come out the side. But I wanted to make sure that the moisture was appropriate and stayed nice and damp in here because you know, the furnace vent is actually right above the camera. If you liked Blue, he has his own playlist, which I will link right over here. And if you've already seen all of that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.